What were the hardest decisions that you had to make during this um, six to eight year period from, let's say, having the idea until or even launching until it took off? And by the way, you know, I should mention just for, for perspective. So I started the company in 2000 and four years after starting the company, which is the typical vesting period, uh, the company was barely surviving and struggling. Um, I went on to go join Google at that time in 2004 uh, and then stayed on the board as a very active, the most active, I'd like to say, board member of Shazam. Um, I would put in, my estimate is 15, 20 hours a week into Shazam um, from that entire period from 2004 until finally Shazam was bought by Apple in 2018. So that's 14 years of not giving up. Um, but uh, but it wasn't as a full-time employee. It was um, during that time we had hired in gray-haired management to, to, to run the company. Uh, and, um, and my role was to be a very, very active board member. Um, so... Uh, Sorry, getting back to your question, what were some of the toughest decisions, I think, yes. you said? but this also sounds uh, like a tough decision to let other people do it, be the board member, and then also trying to work as much besides the Google job to uh, <laughs> to make it work. It's weird. I I, uh, I mean, of course, like we had rounds of layoffs, right, in Series B, you know, when I was CEO of the company, you know, literally just right so soon after sort of spending that first uh, amount of money to to get to launch, and those were of course incredibly tough, right? When you've hired uh, a, a talented team of passionate people, but we were trying to survive in 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 a period, you know, after the dot com bubble popped in, it was a, a uh, it was incredibly difficult to get additional capital. So if, you know, there's no doubt that there's almost no tougher thing to do as as a CEO and or founder of a company than than to lay people off for the, the very people that had you know committed themselves to helping you build this uh, amazing dream. Um, you know, I really think that, you know, other than that, to me, every decision that I made or influenced as a board member, um, what, there's none that jump out as a tough decision. I, I kind of feel like I always felt like I knew strongly about what, what, what needed to be done. Um, and it w I would say the tougher thing was gathering consensus, right? So getting, getting other people on board, that, that is the toughest thing. Uh, the toughest thing is, uh, you know, how do you win over, um, you know, your your board members, your venture capitalists, that this is what you need to do. Um, or or once I was a board member myself and I'm trying to win over the, the new CEO, this is what we need to do. Um, I find that those are often the toughest things because you have a vision, but it's very hard to, con if someone doesn't necessarily agree with you, it can be really, really difficult to win them, win them over. Uh, I would say those are the toughest things. Did you have it for a while that somebody was uh, thinking completely differently than, than you were and you were like, okay, I have to win this person over, otherwise we may have a lot of problems? Uh, I, I mean, there's m many, many, many examples. I, I, have, I, have to, I have to write a book one day to gather them all. But I mean, you know, one of the, the biggest ones, one of the biggest ones that I'm quite open about is, is, is the, the size of the music database. It was one that I, 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 I strongly believed that Shazam had to have an enormous music database, like vast music database that's um, that was much bigger than what others thought was necessary at many points in time. Uh, and um, you know, look, part of that came from here's here's the way I saw things play out with a new Shazam user. People, you show people someone Shazam for the first time, they'd identify a song, and they would have an experience that was almost magical, right? They they could. It was sometimes it was so shocking that I often still to this day see a significant portion of people that can tell you they actually remember the first time they used Shazam, right? And think about how many products is that true for, right? I mean, my, my mom says she remembers when John F. Kennedy was shot and when the man landed on the moon, but it is not that I don't remember the first time I used a MacBook, right? So it's not there's not that many things that's true for. So that was the moment of magic. Wow, a phone can identify a song out of thin air. But then, guess what? The second thing was that would happen. They would then say, does it have the little local band I grew up with in Frankfurt, right? Because that's what they want to know is they go, oh, let's, let's put this to the test. Is this really such a great song? Is this a really such a great service? And so they'd go test it on that. That would be the second song they would test it on. And if you fail there, you could lose them forever. So I just believe we had to have every single song, every single song, you know, every single country you know, every single genre, I mean, dance music, you name it, you know, country music, everything, right? Up and coming bands, bands that 
hadn't you know, hadn't been signed by record labels, you know, you whatever. And nowadays, bands that are on you know SoundCloud or whatever. So, um, and but the reality is that I I'm going to give you you know the truth is that to have all those songs costs money. So you've got you always have this like there's so many things as a startup you, you have pressure this balance of well if it costs money how much money is there right i mean it, you, you have this pressure to not spend too much money and and when it costs a lot of money to because it's not just about getting the music it's actually then housing the music in your search engine right and, and so that requires much more infrastructure so uh i believed that that investment was well worthwhile and I, and i put a lot of a lot of my effort into convincing everyone that it was worthwhile how much of that is perfectionism and how much of that is um just realism that you have to have um that amount of songs to please the second or s third search of a new cus like new customer new user i i believe it's not in my opinion it's not it is it's, it happens to be both professionalism but also realism so i mean the reality is i i think that that's what That's ultimately what wins. Um, it's it's why Amazon won in uh, having everything in its bookstores and then all you know uh, all types of stores. Um, it, it, it's ultimately it's extremely important to, to hold on to the user. And, and and it was inevitable that a day would come that if Shazam didn't do it, Google would do it. Uh, and and then and then guess what would happen? You just lose all your users to Google. Uh, luckily, that didn't happen. And even though Google has a competing service, Shazam dominates his, in music recognition. Uh, so yeah, it was cr absolutely mission critical. It's interesting uh, that you say like you worked at Google while you built uh, Shazam, and you're like, yeah, um, otherwise Google would have done it. It uh, it sounds funny if you're looking back, and then yeah, you were pretty much um, at both companies uh, at that time. I was, I was, but I, the, and I, I I disclosed to Google early on that I was the founder and, and a board member of Shazam. I then was aware that Google was building its own music recognition. Um, which was just one of a billion projects at Google and ne never one of giant scale uh, within Google. Um, and uh, I was not involved in any way right, in that project. I didn't even know the people that worked on it. Um, but, um, but I did have to make sure that I didn't have any conflicts of interest and uh, you know, share, share. I didn't have access to any information about what Google was doing in that area um, so that I could share with Shazam. And I certainly, certainly didn't share what Shazam was doing with Google either. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It was it was something that I mean, it, it, we were all both aware of that potential conflict.